Guillermo del Toro had to flee his home country after his father was kidnapped. But despite his exile, the Mexican filmmaker has transformed his trauma into some of cinema's most twisted tales. This is the evolution of Guillermo del Toro. Del Toro's career has produced some of the most unforgettable movies ever made, and it began in the early years. Guillermo del Toro Gomez was born in Guadalajara, Mexico in 1964 to his father Federico, a wealthy businessman, and his mother Guadalupe, an amateur poet. They raised their son in a strict Catholic household, but young Guillermo quickly developed a taste for the macabre. The carcass of a creature confirms the existence of a living specimen. Mm -hmm. In the same way, I think monsters confirm the otherness. He taught himself English by reading Fright magazines, experimented with fake blood and movie makeup, and raised dozens of snakes, rats, and other creepy crawlies in his family's mansion. He devoured horror of all kinds, but his obsession focused on one film in particular, Creature from the Black Lagoon and its grotesque Gill Man. After shooting spooky short films with his father's Super 8 camera, Guillermo enrolled in film school, where he quickly learned that he'd have to create his own path to success. In 1985, Del Toro founded Necropia, Mexico's first dedicated special effects house, and made a name for himself in Mexico City's cinema scene. In 1993, Guillermo released Kronos, his first feature film, and his first of many collaborations with actor Ron Perlman. The heartwarming horror story of a vampire and his granddaughter was recognized at film festivals around the globe, kickstarting Del Toro's career overnight. But just as he was poised to make his big studio debut, his family was faced with a tragedy that forced the director into exile. At least one good thing came out of shooting the sensual body horror film Mimic. It's where Guillermo met actor contortionist Doug Jones, who would later portray Abe Sapien, The Fawn, and The Asset. Sadly, that's about the only bright spot of the production. Del Toro disowned the film after constant clashes with the producers. But that was nothing compared to the news he received on set. His father had been kidnapped. Bandits had snatched him from the streets of Guadalajara and were holding him for a million dollar ransom. El Toro had no way to meet the kidnappers' demands, but fate stepped in in the form of none other than James Cameron. The two filmmakers became close friends while Del Toro was filming Kronos, and Cameron happily ponied up the dough to free Federico. But even after his father was released unharmed after 72 days in captivity, Del Toro no longer felt safe in the country he called home. He moved with his family to America, where he honed his craft and found his first taste of Hollywood success. After filming the Spanish-language ghost story The Devil's Backbone in 2001, Guillermo was hired to direct Blade II, but it was another comic adaptation that solidified Del Toro in the eyes of fans, 2004's Hellboy. I hate those comic books. You never get the eyes right. It was the perfect fit for Guillermo's twisted sensibilities, mixing his obsession with monsters and the occult with a steampunk style and Lovecraftian dread. He followed it up with Pan's Labyrinth in 2006, a freaky fairy tale that earned Del Toro his first Oscar nominations, and Hellboy 2, which performed poorly when it released in 2008 thanks to some serious superhero competition. Still, Del Toro had become one of Hollywood's most in-demand directors, but for every amazing film he does make, there are even more unrealized dreams. Del Toro's name has been attached to dozens of different projects over the years that, for various reasons, never worked out. Some just failed to materialize, like an animated remake of Roald Dahl's The Witches, his adaptation of H.P. Lovecraft's At the Mountains of Madness, or his video game debut, Silent Hills. Other projects would be taken over by different directors. The third Harry Potter movie was originally going to be a Del Toro film, but he passed on The Prisoner of Azkaban to make Hellboy instead. Similarly, Del Toro was a frontrunner to direct Thor and the ill-fated Halo adaptation in 2008, but he passed on those for his most infamous missed opportunity, The Hobbit. Del Toro spent two years in New Zealand working on the script in pre-production with producer Peter Jackson, but thanks to studio delays and red tape, Del Toro left the film in 2010, leaving Jackson to hastily direct the trilogy himself. I was hanging by a thread of my arm for so long that at the end of the day, you have to cut it off. It's always fun to wonder about what could have been, but despite all the setbacks, Del Toro was able to build a filmography that was compelling, entertaining, and now award-winning. Once the Hobbit debacle was behind him, Del Toro bounced back strong with Pacific Rim, his awe-inspiring ode to Japanese kaiju films. Today we are canceling the apocalypse! Yeah! 
He switched gears for his atmospheric gothic throwback Crimson Peak in 2015 and dabbled in other projects like the animated Troll Hunters. Then in 2017, he returned to his roots and crafted a loving tribute to the monster that helped start his obsession in the first place, the Shape of Water. As a child, Guillermo was heartbroken that the creature from the Black Lagoon couldn't end up with the girl. So when he grew up, Del Toro was able to give the Gill Man the happy ending he deserved. If I told you about her, what would I say? That they lived happily ever after? I believe they did. The Shape of Water is a haunting love story, a chilling Cold War allegory, and a good old-fashioned monster movie all in one. And despite the Academy's well-known bias against sci-fi and horror films, it snagged four well-deserved Oscars, including Best Director and Best Picture. Now that his talents have finally been recognized, Del Toro is finally able to make some of his dream projects a reality, like his next film, a stop-motion Pinocchio movie that he's had in the works since 2008. Not bad for a horror hound from Mexico who carved his own niche in Hollywood and grew into one of its most valued and visionary filmmakers. Thanks for watching the evolution of. We'd love to know who you want to see covered in future installments, so leave a comment below. And while you're down there, please subscribe to Now This Nerd.